How often see comments like these? Macs suck. Linux is better. Other programmers don't use Macs, only frontenders or white coders use them. Usually these are written by people who never actually tried working on a MacBook or simply never had the chance. People typically switch to Apple computers when they get the opportunity to really try one, for example when it's issued at work. Because even with Mac you need time to get used to it, and maybe after years of using a regular computer you won't even want to start. But if you don't, you'll never find out what advantages it offers. So today I'll explain why I finally made the decision to start using Mac for my own projects. And not a MacBook Pro like most developers used to do, but specifically a MacBook Air. As a matter of fact, I've been programming on Macs for a long time, but those were machines provided by companies I worked for. They provided me with top tier MacBook Pros, and over the last 10 years I've had a chance to try out several generations. One of my favorites, by the way, was the one with the touch bar. I really miss that feature. It's a real shame to decide to remove it. Up until this point, I didn't really have a necessity to use a Mac for my personal projects. But in March this year, like everything changed. Apple released a computer that completely covered all my needs. First of all, I decided I no longer want a desktop computer anymore. It's noisy, heavy, and just collecting dust. Sure, it's powerful, but today's technology has advanced so much that portable computers only lag slightly behind desktops in terms of performance. So then, why would you have a computer you can't even take with you? And that's when I decided to fully switch to something portable, preferably small. Something I could just plug in the dock station and work immediately with multiple screens. And yeah, the Air M4 is the first Air model that finally supports two external screens out of the box. Unlike the previous M3 model, we can now also work on a laptop's own screen at the same time. So what's the big deal? You should sell Linux and customize it. The thing is, people who buy Mac computers don't have time to customize their operating system. They want a high quality product that just works out of the box. Linux, on the other hand, comes out of the box as bare as monkey's ass, and the software that comes with it is often horribly janky. Even Ubuntu requires some degree of tweaking, which means spending time reading manuals, only to find out that the program you choose for the job doesn't support what you need, and it has no plugins, so now you have to install a different one and learn that. When I was a student and had lots of free time, I tried to switch window managers I didn't like initially, from GNOME to KDE, and then to Xorg. Until I finally realized they all crap and can't be fixed. A successful major man who values his own time simply doesn't want to mess around with config files or figure out why the file explorer suddenly started unzipping zip files instead of just opening them. Or why thumbnails stopped showing after a recent update. I've just had enough of this Linux nonsense over my entire developer career. Seriously, no thanks, my time is more valuable. Let the people who actually want to mess with this stuff handle it. Students, for example. It will help them build their troubleshooting skills, and that's a great thing for a beginner software developer. Linux is great if it's a dedicated server, it just sits there and runs, and you don't have to deal with all this broken user experience. But with a Mac, surprisingly, you just buy it and everything is there right away. Everything looks great, is polished, works stably, and doesn't break after updates. Macs aren't worth the money. Is that true? Let's break it down. First, let's start with the fact that the entry-level MacBook Air costs $999, and for that money you get the M4 chip, which as a matter of fact outperforms nearly all PC laptops in that price range. Now, the MacBook Air isn't a gaming laptop and never claimed to be, but even with that you can run Cyberpunk at 30 FPS. How many laptops do you know priced under 1 grand that have GPU powerful enough to handle that game? And it's fanless, meaning it doesn't make any noise at all. It doesn't turn in a roaring train the moment you open the calculator app, something that's pretty common with gaming laptops. The second key advantage, the MacBook runs up to 18 hours on a single charge. How many laptops do you know that can provide that kind of battery life? I personally don't know any, especially not with this size and performance. Take this SS Vivo book for example. Not only is it two times slower, but it only gets around 5 hours of battery life. That's more than 3 times less. Another very important aspect to me is the screen quality, since I don't always have access to 24 inch IPS displays, and if I'm working on a sunny day or outdoors, screen brightness and color accuracy are even more crucial to me. The Air screen is a liquid retina display with a max brightness of 500 nits. Most Ultrabooks can't compete with that, they barely reach 400 nits, even those who cost twice as much. But the main difference is Mac's unified memory architecture. That means the GPU uses the same memory as the CPU. So on Macs there's a lot more video memory available, twice as much as the most PC laptops offer. 
Why is video memory that important? Well, many of you have probably heard that GPUs are heavily used to train and run AI models. People usually bought NVIDIA top tier GPUs for thousands of years and run them in SLI to work with AI. But after the M4 architecture was released, a lot of people switched to Macs specifically because of this unified memory design. And now they are running models locally on budget Mac minis, which cost around 500 bucks new. At the same time, most laptops with RTX GPUs only have about 6 to 8 GB of VRAM, which unfortunately means you won't be able to run any large models on them, only simple LMs. Any laptop is faster than Mac. When it comes to performance, take this example. If you run DeepSeeker 1 with 7 billion parameters, the generation speed on MacBook Air is 20 tokens per second. This model requires about 4.5 GB of VRAM and a GPU no weaker than RTX 3050 with 8 GB of memory. On a mobile RTX 3050, the generation speed is only 4 tokens per second and that's about 5 times slower. Desktop GPU RTX 3060 with 8 GB gets around 25 to 35 tokens per second. So we can estimate that the GPU in the air is somewhere between the 3050 and 60, but with twice as much VRAM, which allows you to load much bigger models. So when we draw a conclusion, somehow Apple released a laptop that is suitable for everything. Development, graphics work, AI workloads, and even a little bit of gaming. And the most peculiar thing, it costs under $1000, lasts longer on battery than anything else on the market, makes no noise during operation and outperforms the vast majority of laptops, even ones that cost 5 times as much. I forgot to mention that Macs also have the best mouse on the planet. It supports gestures, charges through a lightning cable, and lasts almost two months of single charge. They can do horizontal scrolling, page swiping, smart zoom, mission control, it just feels amazing to use. And most importantly, you can forget about batteries, and it fits easily in a back pocket. There is just nothing else like this. And that's it for today. Like and subscribe to see more videos like this.